mountain where no man is mounted I'm gonna stand on the peak Out there's a land that time don't command Wanna be the first you arrive No time for pondering why I'm wondering on where the best is And would you all like to sit down, please? You're happy to hold on to your okay for now? You're allowed to hold hands if you want. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm thrilled to welcome you properly now, having bossed you around earlier about your, your phones. Uh, welcome to this, this wonderful day. I'm thrilled to be Mara and Robbie's celebrant today. Firstly, 
I know they'd like to thank you all for being here to share this special day with them. They wanted to celebrate this new phase of their relationship with family and their closest friends. And what better setting than this stunning chateau, a romantic and memorable start all over a hot. <laughs> so we join today in a spirit of friendship and love to celebrate with them. It's a day of harmony and unison, of trust and faith, a day of new paths to follow. It's a time of hope. It's a time when we see a man and a woman facing the future as one, secure in their love for each other. Before we go on, we'd just like to take a moment to remember those who can't be here today, particularly, of course, Robbie's father, Kenny, who would have been so proud of him today. In Kenny's own words, your love makes me so happy always. Never forget, I'm still with you to love and guide you. Just ask and you'll know I'm right beside you. So we remember that we're sharing this celebration not only with those who are here today, but also those who are here with us in spirit. So to help me prepare for today, I asked Robbie and Mara a lot about themselves. Firstly, I asked how they met. Tricky one, that. <laughs> well, they said, this is not as easy as you'd expect. <laughs> we know we met in our first year at the University of Edinburgh, probably October of 2007, <laughs> but we aren't quite sure exactly when or where. Sadly, they say, this means it probably wasn't love at first sight. <laughs> However, when they did get together, they realised they had something special early on. We first said we loved each other during our second year of university, they told me, and we've told each other most days since. And throughout the time it took for them to complete their degrees, their postgraduate degrees, Mara moving to Paris, Lima, Kathmandu, <laughs> New York, getting their first jobs, <laughs> moving to London, living in their first home. Together, they've always put their love and their relationship first. And somewhere along that journey, they both knew that they wanted to spend the rest of their lives together. So what is it, I asked, that they love about each other? But their response to that comes later in the ceremony <laughs> and in their words. So I wondered then if they shared the same interests, food, wine, travel, they tell me. And I was amused to hear that Mara has sometimes made restaurant reservations in new countries even before they've booked the flight. <laughs> and it was Mark Twain who wrote, I found out there ain't no surer way to find out whether you like people or hate them than to travel with them. <laughs> and they seem to have discovered that indeed they do quite like each other. And it seems to me that actually they just really enjoy being together and that they not only love each other, but are also best friends. Friendship is a great basis for a strong marriage. And Helen, Robbie's mum, will now share with us a few words on this. Thank you, Helen. Would you like to take my place? It is often said that it is love that makes the world go round. However, without doubt, it is friendship which keeps our spinning existence on an even keel. True friendship provides so many of the essentials for a happy life. It is the foundation on which to build an enduring relationship. It is the mortar which bonds us together in harmony, and it is the calm, warm protection we sometimes need. <laughs> <laughs> when the outside world seems cold and chaotic. <laughs> True friendship nurtures our hopes, supports us in our disappointments, and encourages us to grow to our best potentials. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. So today, Mara and Robbie pledge to each other both their love and the strength 
warmth and fun of true friendship. And you'll all probably know that they have had a lot of fun and have already forged great memories. I loved their response to my question about some of the best memories of their time together, and I'm sharing it in their words. Our 10 years together have been filled with so many special moments. It's difficult to narrow it down. Some were very grand, such as traveling to different corners of the world, but some were very simple, having a coffee and an egg and bacon roll at Borough Market. <laughs> They loved their travels in South America together when Robbie met Mara's extended family for the first time, a trip which brought them closer together. <laughs> and they loved their Thailand trip, not only for the unique experience and discoveries which left a huge impact, but also for what Robbie calls Mara's usual shenanigans. <laughs> she emailed all the hotel managers before they went, <laughs> pretending it was their honeymoon. They got amazing <laughs> upgrades that made the trip even more special. <laughs> they remember fondly not killing each other when they moved into their first flat. <laughs> Apparently, they had no internet for weeks and they had to find something creative to do. They discovered painting <laughs> and managed to create something together which still hangs in their kitchen. So you two have loved and lived <laughs> together for a while and whilst you make your commitment to each other, here today, you well know that no ceremony can create a marriage. Only you can do that. Through your love, patience, good humour, through talking and really listening to each other, through helping, supporting and believing in the other, through learning to make the important things matter and to just let go of the rest. And those of you who've been married for a while or together for a while, may appreciate this writer's thoughts on this, which I think are worth sharing, and I'll gallop through them as it's so hot. <laughs> so, you have to listen carefully. Happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, the little things are the big things. It's never being too old to hold hands. It's remembering to say I love you. It's never going to sleep angry. It's at no time taking the other for granted. It's having a mutual sense of values and common objectives forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It's standing together, facing the world. It's not looking for perfection in each other. It's not marrying the right partner. It's being the right partner. And it's with the intention of being that right partner for life that Robbie and Mara stand before you now. Of course, it took a proposal to get us here today, and this was a good one. Robbie had wanted it to be somewhere stunning and romantic and had found a perfect chateau in Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. After an amazing day of wine tasting, they visited their final chateau, the one. He'd been coordinating with them for weeks to make sure everything was perfect and all the staff were in on it. So much so that when Mara went to the bathroom, they all came out from the back office to ask to see the ring. <laughs> After a tour of the chateau, tasting some great wines, the staff had set up the balcony of the chateau with champagne and Mara's favourite flowers. <laughs> Mara, I'm assured, had not been expecting a proposal. And Robbie led Mara here feeling very nervous, only for her to be completely oblivious to the whole thing and comment, oh, look, Robbie, that looks so beautiful <laughs> for somebody. <laughs> and proceeded to walk off with their new camera to take <laughs> photos of the chateau with him in the background. <coughs> it was only after he got down on one knee that she knew what was happening. They both declare it simply perfect. I can feel you breathing with your hair on my skin as we lie within the light. Sheets when it's cold on your feet, cause you'll fall back to sleep every time. Grow old with me, let us share what we see, and all the best it could be, just you and I. And our hands, they might.
Hogar es un abrazo que ofrece cobijo. Hogar no es una casa, sino un abrigo. Es una pared donde se miden los sueños y se firman las treguas. Es una ventana en el sol, en la niebla, en la puerta cerrada, al ruido de afuera. Hogar son las victorias en cada arruga del tiempo. Son los recuerdos que hacen hermoso el camino. Hogar es un te quiero en la nevera, las fotos del salón, la risa sin sentido y también es hogar el llanto desgarrador. Es hogar el compartir, el querer todo contigo y nada ya sin ti. El hogar es aguantarse, es ceder y decidir hoy por ti y mañana por mí. Hogar es ganarse hasta los defectos, el quererse siempre mejor. Hogar es superarse, es mirarse a los ojos y saberse vencedor. Hogar es darse la mano y llenar de pasos el camino. Hogar es pararse a mirar atrás y sentir que sin ti nada habría tenido sentido. Thank you, Nabeen. I wish I'd understood it. <laughs> I get the gist. <laughs> so here we are then, not to witness the beginning of what will be, but rather to celebrate what already is. Today we celebrate with Mara and Robbie the joyful occurrence that's already taken place in their lives, and then the commitment they make today. It takes a lifetime of love, commitment, and compromise to make a marriage everlasting, and today you declare that love and commitment to each other before your family and friends. You've been together now for over 10 years, and for all that time, you've been making commitments in an informal way. The vows that you're about to make now are a way of saying to one another, you know all those things that we promised and hoped and dreamed? Well, I meant it all, every word. Robbie and Mara have prepared their own vows and they're now going to make those to each other. Would you like to give your bouquet to someone and I'm going to ask Robbie, would you like to make yours first? Mara, I only have these few words to tell you what you mean to me and to make my promises to you as your husband. And of course, that's not enough. No number of words would be enough, but let me try. I was lucky enough to meet you when I was only 17. And within the first few months, I knew you were a truly rare person. I was amazed by your intelligence, by your beauty, by your elegance, your strength, your spontaneity, your desire to help to devote your life to helping children. I then discovered how compatible we were, how much we laughed together, <laughs> that what we wanted and valued in life matched perfectly, and how much of an adventure life was with you. I know that we have grown and changed as people since that first day, but I also know that I have loved you through every single moment and every single change. I promise that through each stage of life we move through together, I will appreciate you, I will respect you, I will support you. I promise to provide for you, and when the time comes, to provide for our family. I promise to protect you from all that I can. I promise to continue to put you first, just as you always put me first. I know that in the future I will not always be what I should be. I might forget to listen, to hear what you are saying. I might try to solve a problem when all you need is a shoulder to cry on. I might be stubborn, stubborn or just simply wrong. <laughs> However, I promise I will always love you and I will always try to be the man that you believe I am. 
I promise to follow you in your crazy schemes. I promise to be your partner in crime, to bail you out of jail when the time inevitably comes. <laughs> to embrace your bravery, your ambition, to be the Sancho to your Quixote. I promise to challenge you, to make sure you achieve all of the amazing things that you are capable of achieving. Since the first day that our relationship began, your laughter and joyfulness has brought me a comfort and a serenity like no other thing I've ever experienced. I promise to try and always make you, make you happy and to laugh all through our lives together. I promise to hold this moment in my mind forever. Your beauty, our family, the ring, the emotion I am overwhelmed by. To remind myself of the complete and utter happiness marrying you brings me. Most of all, I promise for the rest of our lives to continue to keep falling in love with you over and over again. I love you. Mara, the dead, the dead, the dead, the dead. 
Kavana as your wife. I do. Mara, do you take Robert Andrew Hay as your husband? I do. So Mara and Robbie will now exchange rings as a symbol of the promises they've made today. The circle of the wedding ring symbolises eternity, having neither beginning or end. Let the rings be a symbol of the unity into which your lives are now joined. You offer the rings freely as a symbol of your enduring love for each other. So could we have the rings? Please, and could you give Robbie his for Barabas? Is that going to be halfway on? And to keep... Sure. Oh, Wrong you? ring. <laughs> <laughs> Mara, you are my love now and for always. Mara, you are my love now and for always. With this ring, I give you my heart. With this ring, I give you my heart. It's a symbol of my love. It's a symbol of my love. And a reminder of all that I have promised today. And a reminder of all that I have promised today. Robbie, you're my love now and for always. Robbie, you're my love now and for always. With this ring, I give you my heart. With this ring, I give you my heart. It's a symbol of my love and a reminder of all I have promised today. It is a symbol of my love and a reminder of all that I have promised today. Bit hotter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you want to hold my hands, please. Robbie and Mara, these are the hands of your best friend, your husband, your wife, full of love and strength for you, holding yours on this day of celebration as you promise to love and cherish each other. They're the hands that will work alongside yours as you build your future and your home together in search of happiness, health and security. They're the hands that will bring encouragement and patience. The hands that through your lives together will reach for yours with the reassurance of love and friendship. You hold in your own hands and hearts the making or breaking of this union. You freely consented to be partners for life. So look at one another and remember this moment. Before this, you've been friends, you've been lovers. Now, you step over a threshold. After today, you say to the world, this is my husband, this is my wife. Your love is a strong foundation on which your lives can flourish and it gives me the greatest of pleasure to introduce you as man and wife. <laughs> and you may be surprised. There we go. That was a strange thing I've ever had.
This is a magic moment. This is a love poem in an epic setting when the daughter I would die for commits for life to a man whom I and all of us here admire, love, and even hug. Both Myra and Robbie are sensitive, emotionally mature, intelligent, humorous, generous, and adventurous souls who have never been cynical, who have never been mean. And today they are radiating happiness as all those qualities coalesce. Their now 11-year-old love did not just fall from heaven. They worked at it, crisscrossing the Atlantic to keep the flame alive, getting to know each, other, each one's cultural background and future in-laws. Robbie had to play chess and tennis with me, <laughs> Mara's dad, and even let me win a few times. In Peru, he won over Mara's grandmother by eating chicken with a double portion of rice. He wore the Peruvian football team shirt and even asked me to get him a Peruvian passport once. And when I was in dire straits, trying to meet a translator's deadline with a desktop in the middle of a holiday on the coast of the Californian coast or in Italy, Robbie and Myra would help me for hours with the typing, never letting me feel bad about it. Not that they are always approving, especially not about my bad jokes. Ay, <laughs> Yonatan is one of Robbie's favorite phrases. In short, thanks to Robbie and Robbie's parents and stepdad, Helen, Kenny, and Graham, whom I dearly thank, I have glimpsed the joy of having a son, as well as two lovely daughters, both of whom Robbie has embraced. From Myra, I have learned so much. From the earliest hours in her life, when she began sucking so strongly on her mother's breast that she got a colic. No, but that love, for, that love for good food continues to this day. I remember her charging ahead at a classy restaurant in Lima for breakfast. So I want strawberries and ice cream, she would say. I admire her willpower too. Uh, never taking no for an answer if that was the easy way out. We can do it, Daddy. That was one of her favorite phrases. The one thing she did not want to do when she was three or four was learn English in Peru. <laughs> Two English teachers resigned in the attempt. <laughs> no hablo inglés. <clears throat> Mara would say adamantly, her hands on her hips. I admire her generosity too. That also goes back years when as an 11-year-old, she would pop money randomly into people's parking lot meters just in case they ran out before they got back to their cars. But most of all, I feel and love the fact that Mara and I share a love of literature, be it the Spanish poet Lorca or Don Quixote. For years, she said I was quixotic and she was Sancho Panza. However, for some time now, as in the novel, the roles have switched and not just because of my pants up. <laughs> Talking of literature, I came across some lines by the great Irish poet Yeats that captured the thrill of love. I confess I'm not sure how to pronounce the hero and heroine's names in Irish, so I've decided to call them Robbie and Mara. It goes like this. One day, Mara hears from some Danan poets bringing me honeyed, wandering thought of noble Robbie and his fame. And she reacts, Oh Robbie, by your brazen bell, there was no limb of mine but fell into a desperate gulf, gulf of love. You only will I wed, she cried, and I will make a thousand songs and set your name, all names above. And Robbie, Oh Robbie, Mount by me and ride to shores by the wash of the tremulous tide, where men have heaped no burial mounds, and the days pass by like a wayward tune, where broken faith has never been known, and the blushes of first love never have flown. And there I will give you a hundred hounds, 
No mightier creatures bay at the moon. And a hundred robes of murmuring silk, and a hundred calves and a hundred sheep, whose long wool whiter than sea froth grows, and a hundred spears and a hundred bows, and oil and wine and honey and milk, and always never anxious sleep. While a hundred ewes, mighty of limb, but knowing no tumult, no hate, no strife, and a hundred maidens, merry as birds, when they dance to a fitful measure, have the speed like the speed of the salmon herds, shall follow your horn and obey your whim, and you shall know the Danan leisure, and Mara be with you for a wife. Then she sighed gently, and then I mounted, says Robbie, and she bound me, and many a mile, pardon, and then I mounted and she bound me, with her triumphing arms around me, and whispering to herself, enwound me. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. I'd now like to welcome Mara's wonderful mother, Nebby. Hello. Uh, it's so beautiful to be here. I hope you understand my Peruvian English. Um, hello? Yeah? yeah? All right. In one of her trips back home uh, from Edinburgh, where Mara was studying, uh, one day Mara embraced me and said, you know, Mommy, I love Robbie so much that one life wouldn't be enough to be with him. I felt so moved by her words and so happy because she so in love. Fortunately, she was loved back in the same way by Robbie, a man with a beautiful mind and soul. I knew then that this day would come and I couldn't be so happy. But I must tell you that this love story almost didn't happen. I accompanied Mara to settling at the University of Edinburgh. The freshest week went quite nicely. She even invited me to, to go pub crawling, which I reluctantly declined. Back in the USA, a couple of days later, Jonathan and I received a call in the middle of the night. Mara desperately wanted to come back home to Washington. She said she was not ready to leave home, and worst of all, she had been given boiled salmon with cucumber for dinner. <laughs> a double scene for a Peruvian foodie. Jonathan and I took turns to, tell, to sell her the, the UK Europe experience, the sabbatical year, her British family, uh, to no avail. After intense negotiations, Sorry, I got lost. <laughs> I finally said, okay, Mara, we, we had paid for a whole year, so after second semester, if you don't like it, you can come back. She must have thought it was a good deal because she accepted it. <laughs> after three months, she had made friends for life, and the second semester, she met Robbie. His only true uh, rival was Rafa Nadal. <laughs> you know, but she, he just plays tennis. <laughs> but Rafa just played tennis when Robbie excels in all sports, except, except ice skating, <laughs> a sport in which Mara can hold Robbie's hand. Robbie, you are brilliant, kind, and handsome, a Renaissance man. Some people have a tight life, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> But I think this love story was meant to be. When Kenny, Robbie's father, was 20 years old, he went to Peru to visit Machu Picchu. He must have asked, asked those mountains for a sacred wish. By the way, Jonathan went to Peru the same, the same year. Jonathan and I got married in September 18. Kenny and Helen, a day later, right? and Mara and Robbie celebrate their anniversary 
the same day. So I think the stars were up to something. I have witnessed the young love to go stronger uh, over the years, respecting, admiring, supporting each other. During those 11 years, as everybody has said, Mara spent a semester in Peru, a year another one in France, Nepal, New York, etc. Giving each other a space to grow, to find their passion in life has helped their love prevail. Mara ended up loving Edinburgh and found her vocation for international relations. I'm glad she had a change in her career path because when she was a six year old, her dream job was to be an ice cream scooper <laughs> and give children, give children extra sparkles to make them happy. Her love for children hasn't changed though. She's actually like the floaties to Hamelin. All, ch all children follow her. I know I'm being biased, but Mara is caring, intelligent, generous, sensitive person, born with the joie de vivre. She was born in Peru, grew up in America, and is studied in the UK. A wonderful mix of cultures that makes the, wonder, the, the, the world a better place. Mara enjoys dancing salsa just uh, as an uh, English cheddar, a passion she, ch uh, she shares with with a young governor, with, <laughs> with Alice. <laughs> she said, dear daughter, a loving sister, and I know she will be a wonderful wife and a perfect daughter-in-law. <laughs> My beautiful daughter, Mara, I'm so proud of you. For the person you have become, for your interest in the world, your integrity, your empathy, your independence, Mara and Robbie, you have a treasure each other. In a few weeks, I'm going to be 6,316 miles away from London. And as Mara used to say when she was, she was sad, no even an ice cream will give, me, will give joy to my heart. But it, it gives me comfort that Helen and Graham are those who sparkles around the corner. It's so wonderful to celebrate this moment with all of you who have touched Mara and Robbie's lives in special ways. Many, many lives of happiness to you, Mara and Robbie. Querida familia peruana, queridos hermanos, cuñados, sobrinos, qué alegría tan grande compartir con ustedes este momento no podría ser igual sin ustedes. Es un especial momento para la vida de Robbie y Mara. Ustedes lo aceptaron desde el primer instante. Bueno, muchas gracias por estar aquí. Thank you very much and enjoy the evening. <laughs> Thank you, Nobby. Next up, we have the man of the moment, Mr. Robert Hay. <laughs> yeah. Hi, all. Well, to be honest, I'm never going to get an easier cheer in my life. So, on behalf of my wife and I, Thank you all for making such an effort to come out to France to join us in this, for this celebration. Now, you might think I'd be quite... <laughs> well... <laughs> you might think I would have been quite nervous about giving a speech like this, in front of this many people. But to be honest, having spent several Christmases in Peru now, I feel very prepared for giving this kind of emotional touchy-feely family speech. There was one experience in particular that made me, this speech seem like a piece of cake. My first Christmas in Peru, I was at Nebi and Jonathan's house. Mara's entire Peruvian family, most of whom could be here today, were there 
so there was about 30 people sitting around the table. As we sit down, I hear a clink clink of cutlery on glass, and I turn to see Mami Ermita, Mara's grandmother, about to speak. Now, many of you won't know who Mami Ermita is, but she's the matriarch of the Arellano family. And what she says goes. <laughs> so everyone quietens down. Everyone listens very respectfully as Yerma proceeds to bless the dinner and to say some lovely words about God and about the family who she loves so much. And I thought that was very nice. I then picked up my knife and fork, getting ready to eat. I was wrong. <laughs> she then asks Mara's little cousin, Vale, to speak. Now, for those who don't know, Vale is about 10 years old, and so I, in my very British way, thought, it's a bit harsh. <laughs> she's 10. I mean, she's going to be super intimidated. She's going to be really nervous. But I was also thinking, but that wasn't me. <laughs> Little did I know. Vale proceeded to give the most wonderful, emotional, heartfelt, personal speech about her entire family and what they meant to her. And I don't mean this in a British way. I mean this in a, she went on for 45 minutes. She went round each individual member of the family sitting there and told a personal, emotional story about the connection she had with them. She turned to me, who I met, I met Valley once before at this point when she was three, and told a story about the butterfly photograph she drew for me when she was three. By the end of her speech, everyone, everyone was in tears. Everyone was profusely thanking Vale for the special moment in their lives. People got, people got up from the table, people hugged her. It was a beautiful moment. I was so impressed with Vale and touched by what she had said. Everyone quietened down, wiping tears from their eyes. <laughs> and then I heard Mama Yermita say, Yerobi? I was genuinely terrified. <laughs> Luckily, I had Mara there, as I always do, to translate some of my stoically British, uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot, it's a lovely dinner, appreciate it. <laughs> Into a more Peruvian, appropriate Peruvian emotional response. After that experience, even following those wonderful speeches by Nevi and Jonathan seems like a piece of cake. So as you will know, it's my job to thank all the people who have helped create this amazing day we've had today. Before I do that, I would like to take a moment just to mention the people that can't be with us here today. If I'm honest, I expected there to be quite a lot more people who couldn't be with us here today, considering we got married in the least convenient part of France that there has ever been. And it's the middle of the hottest heat wave we've ever had. But here you all are, and we couldn't be happier. In our beautiful ceremony, Moira mentioned my dad. I know he isn't here with us physically, but I've always felt that my dad lived on to the impact he left on his friends and his family. I know the people he all loved most in this world are here and to share this day with Mara and I, and so I know he is here with us too. That holds true for all the people who couldn't be here with us today. And they're no longer with us to celebrate this moment. Each one of them has impacted our lives in such special ways and we just wish they could have been here to share this day with us. It makes me very sad that my dad never got to meet Mara. I know he would have loved you and been so proud of me for choosing someone as amazing as you to share my life with. There are a few other people who can't be with us here today. I'm not going to name all of them, but I specifically wanted to mention one other person who I've already mentioned already, is Mama Ermita. I know she is represented by the amazing, amazing, beautiful family she has here today, and who are all here to celebrate with us, having come all the way from Peru. In her honor, I'm going to eat fourths of every single thing I get served, <laughs> which I know would make her very happy. Now, on to the thank yous. Unfortunately, I don't have Mara with me to translate my thanks, thank you, appreciate it, into something a little bit more appropriate and emotional, so I'm going to have to try and do my best. Firstly, and it's been said already, and I'm sure it'll be said again, but thank you to each and every one of you for coming all this way. We, from the beginning of our relationship, we have always felt supported and loved by every single one of you, 
be it friends, be it family, cousins, whoever. Whenever we've needed people, and we have needed people, you've been there, and you've been there to help us. Thank you for being here, for supporting us, and for simply just being wonderful friends and family. Secondly, I would like to say a specific thank you to Mara's bridesmaids. There they are. There they are. Katie, Becca, Jenny, Mara is very selective with her friends. And the fact that all of you are here today speaks to what amazing and wonderful people each and every single one of you is. Thank you for being here, for supporting us, and I think the Hendy you planned just exemplifies how much you understand and love Mara. I couldn't be more perfect for her. Gabby? Not many people know this actually, but Gabby is probably the reason that Mara and I are together. So when Mara was in first year of university, Mara and I were friends, but we weren't anything more. And then Gabby was looking at her Facebook photos and asked Mara who her cute friend was. <laughs> and I think that opened Mara's eyes. Mar uh, Gabby, to me, you have always been the little sister that I've never had. We, we get on so incredibly well. You have always accepted me and supported Mara and I's relationship, especially when we needed it. I will always be here for you, especially since I'm now officially your cuñado. For Mara, I truly do not know two closer sisters in the world. You are someone she greatly admires and she connects with on a level that few ever get to experience. We both love you so much. To my usher, next to my ushers, to Andy and Colin, I know you guys will hate this, so I'll keep it very short. There we are. I know we give each other quite a hard time, but I truly feel like if I ever need anything, both of you would be there for me in a second. You're both great friends. We can share a laugh, but we can be there for each other in the hard times. I love both of you. For my best men, Ewan and Jamie. Ewan, quite simply, you're my best friend. Even when you are traveling around the world, I know that as soon as we meet up, it feels as though no time has passed whatsoever. I know I will laugh so much and have simply the best time with you. You've been amazing throughout this whole experience. Today, I'm sure he's pretty much helped every single person here. And yeah, I know you will be there to support me and to support Mara whenever we're here. Mara truly, honestly, loves you as her own friend. If I wasn't in the picture, she'd still be friends with you. I love you, dude. Jamie, I know we don't always speak openly about our emotions, but I'm marrying into a Peruvian family, so you're screwed. But I've always looked up to you a great deal. You might not always be comfortable showing it with me, but I know you will always be there if I ever Mara and I need you. And you've literally shown that by letting us live in your house for the past five months. I love you. I also want... I also wanted to say a special thank you to Mara's Peruvian family. Came all the way from Peru. You have to excuse me. A mi familia Ariano. Gracias a todos por hacer un esfuerzo enorme de viajar en Peru a Francia. Cuando Mara y yo planeamos esta boda, uno de nuestros mayores temores era que no hay pan a poder venir ustedes. Que no estaríamos rodeados por la calidez de todos los que amamos tanto. Pero el hecho de que cada uno de ustedes esté aquí es un regalo tan espaci especial para nosotros. En segundo lugar, de mi parte, muchísimas gracias desde el fondo de mi corazón por aceptarme en su familia. Desde el primer día, desde el primer día que llegué a Perú, me abrazaron y me quisieron como un hijo, un sobrino, un primo, un hijado y un humano. Me han hecho sentir parte de la familia y nunca podré expresar lo que eso significa para mí. Por último, gracias por Mara. Sé que una parte tan especial de la maravillosa mujer que es Mara es gracias al amor, cariño y el apoyo que todos ustedes le han mostrado. Las increíbles cualidades que tiene se reflejan en el maravilloso grupo de personas de las que vino y están aquí hoy. 
Son una familia que admiro tanto y no podría estar más emocionado de ser parte de ella. That was good. Navy and Jonathan, I want to say something to you too. From the very first moment Mara brought me to Bethesda, you have always accepted me into your family. Jonathan, when, I, when Mara and I were struggling with long distance, you genuinely flew me to Washington just so we could see each other. Your support, will, you will never know how much your support meant to us. I will never forget the generosity, kindness, and acceptance you have always shown me. Hopefully I have indeed been a good investment. <laughs> Naomi, my partner, you have loved me and accepted me like you, I was your own son. Since the day I met Mara, I knew how close she was to our family, how passionately and fiercely she loved you. Since you have always set an incredible example to her of how to raise a family and how to love each other. I know just last weekend, Mara said, that we can look at each other the way you two do now. She knows how happy we can be. I know the person I have fallen so deeply and madly in love with is the person you nurtured and loved. So from the bottom of my heart and hers, thank you. Graham, I know it's not been easy for you coming into a family of a unit like my mom, my brother and me. You've had to manage different dynamics and personalities, but since the first moment I met you, you've always treated me like your own son. You have loved me and helped raise me, and all the while whilst respecting my dad's presence and influence on my life. I truly do not know anyone else that could have done that. Thank you, and I love you. Mom? I, I don't know how to say this, but I do not know how you did what you did. To lose dad when we did, and for life to be so unfair that you were faced with raising a four-year-old and a six-year-old by yourself, to me now it seems insurmountable. You not only did it, you did it amazingly. My dad died when I was four, and thanks to you, I still had a happy childhood. I don't know how else to say that. I know I am the person I am today because of the incredible love and support you have always shown me. From the day I was born until this day, from the second you met Mara, you have been open and embraced her into our family. You have made her feel loved and protected even when her own family were very far away. We both love you so much. Thank you. I actually have a, I have a little something for Nebby and Mom. Hang on. I truly do not know how to put into words to tell you how much I love you. From the first day I met you, when I'm with you, every other part of my life has moved into the background. You matter. We matter. I have known since the first day I told you I loved you, that whatever happens in life, I will be able to get through it because I have you. You are my home. You are my safety. You are a truly amazing person in so many ways, and my life has been so much more incredible because of you. I love you, and I always will. Thank you. sunglasses on because my waterproof mascara has run. <laughs> Next up we have the bride's wonderful sister, maid of honor, Gabby Kavanaugh. Can we get another round of applause for Robbie Spanish? Woo! Oh my god. 
didn't know you could do that. Um, hello, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Mara's sister, and as of a few hours ago, now Robbie's. Um, just want to say thank you so much um, for traveling, traveling across three continents to be here. I know how much it means to both of them to celebrate the special day with you, so thank you. Um, I also think we all knew that this wedding was not one to miss. If it was anything like Mar and Robbie, it was going to be classy, delicious, and a wild Peruvian Scottish mishmash that works beautifully. And who doesn't want to see Scottish people dancing salsa later? So. <laughs> Um, so some of you may know Mara for her unparalleled passion for food, it's been a big theme here, <laughs> insatiable hunger and infuriating metabolism. Um, some of you know her as the person who refuses to take no for an answer and can sweet talk her way into any restaurant in town. Others may know her for her killer merengue dance moves or for literally saving the world through her work. And all of us know here, know, all of us here know her for her bringing light and happiness to everyone around her, especially Robbie. I know her as my protective and wise, bossy and beautiful older sister, my private Backstreet Boys choreographer, my math tutor, the world's best car karaoke duet partner, my best friend, the kind of thoughtful sister that gives you Pringles when you're a newborn child, and the kind of sister who gives you a bottle of water to chase down your first shot. Um, I'm sure we can all agree she's one of the better humans out there, if not the best. So needless to say, when I met Robbie 10 or 11 years ago, expectations were set high. I was 15 years old and was over visiting Mara in Edinburgh. On my first night there, she took me, mouthful of braces and all, to my first college party, Robbie's 19th birthday. We walked in and I asked her which one was the new boyfriend we had heard so much about. Then, lo and behold, the bathroom door swings open and there's Robbie over the toilet, mid-puke. <laughs> I remember being 15 years old and thinking, wow, this guy's awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, since, the <laughs> since the bathroom incident, I've had the enormous pleasure of watching them grow from nauseous teenagers to full-grown adults, mortgage and all, and watch their relationship grow more special by the day and by the year. <laughs> um, I feel so lucky to not have only been a legal witness to your marriage, but a witness to your beautiful relationship over this past decade. Um, I could write a whole separate speech about the wonderful, generous things you guys have done for me, but tonight is all about the two of you. While it might be cliche to say that two people balance each other perfectly, it really is true for Mar and Robbie. Mar could not have found a more generous, thoughtful, patient, and generally kind soul than Robbie. They bring out the best in each other, challenge each other, and care more about the other than about themselves. She laughs at his dad jokes, and he encourages her mischievous schemes. Together, they enjoy life to the fullest, whether it's traveling the world or having a cozy night in, making grilled cheese. <laughs> It's a relationship that, after a decade of change and long distance across four continents, has only grown stronger and stronger. I'm, no, I'm not alone when I say it's a relationship that I have learned from, admired, and aspired to over the years. So here we all are at their wedding to celebrate the beautiful life they've built and all the exciting things to come. So cheers to the bride and groom. I love you so much. And last, but definitely not least, we have the two joint best men, Jamie Hay and Ewan Jones. We're going to do it without the microphone, so I will project, <laughs> like I always do. How are we doing? Let's get another round of applause for all of those speeches. They were truly excellent. Wasn't they? No. Speaking of which, as a brief aside before I get started, not many will know, but Johnny's email address for his work at the United Nations 
It's johnny.barolo9 at aol.com. And it's that kind of commitment to professionalism and alcoholism that I've seen grow and blossom inside of Robbie during these past 11 years. In all honesty, though, those were very emotional. I mean, I was crying. Graham was, we were all crying. They were very emotional speeches. And you'll be pleased to hear that we are not going to follow those. It's time for some humor. And with all the wisdom here, it's you and I's job to speak on behalf of the idiots in the room, of which there are many. And so if I were you guys, I would take Johnny's example and start consuming some of this fine wine that is in front of you. Now, as you know, it is tradition for the groom to appoint his best friends as the best men. But unfortunately, Rob doesn't have any friends. <laughs> so he had to appoint me. I couldn't say no. And Ewan, despite all those words he met last week, <laughs> in all seriousness, no, Ewan, you know how deeply uncommitted to organizing things I am. <laughs> and so I could not have asked for a better best man than you. So a round of applause for you and again, please. <laughs> We're going to do this speech as something of a double act. Unfortunately, without any of the comedy. I'm going to give a bit of background as to how Rob became the tall, handsome, charming, cross-dressing man in a skirt that you see in front of you today and Ewan is going to be, give you a flavor of some of his misbehavior at school and university learning how to become a professional arguer that he is today but in all seriousness today has been the product of an immense amount of planning not just on Rob and Mara's part but also their friends families and most importantly both sets of parents this is typical of the role that Rob and Mara's families have played throughout their relationship. Genuinely loving, always supportive, always offering guidance, always offering advice on high quality wine, <laughs> poor quality email addresses, <laughs> always being supremely helpful in packing car boots. <laughs> Not many of you will get that, but more will. <laughs> And, in Mum's case, always offering advice, whether it's been asked for or not. <laughs> and so again, another round of applause for the parents, please. And I know, I know Rob touched on it, but I find it hard to overstate how important Mara's maid of honour and bridesmaids have been in the conception and execution of this day. From Gabby's role throughout Mara's life, as so profoundly expressed by Mara in that speech last night, to Jenny, Becca, and Katie's role. You are all exceptionally beautiful and talented women. And so another round of applause, please, for the bridesmaids. And so to the groom, loyal, caring, honest, Sincere, funny, good looking. Enough about me. Let's talk about <laughs> Rob. Being Rob's older brother, it was one of my major roles in his development to build his proficiency across a range of sports. <laughs> and Ewan is going to give you more on this later. But I remember one time particularly where we were on holiday with, I think, our immediate and extended family. I'm not quite sure on that point. And for whatever reason, we decided to play mini golf. Probably because Graham got a coupon or something. I don't know. <laughs> now, as everybody knows, the way to maximize your score in mini golf is to take a massive elongated swing, like you were swinging a driver. Now, Rob evidently completely agreed with this assessment. And as I was taking a swing, leaned in closer to inspect exactly how it should be done. Now, unfortunately, he timed this inspection very poorly, and I managed to hit him in the bridge of the nose with my backswing. And he still carries a scar to this day, and you can ask him about that later. Now, when Rob first told me about Mara, I have to admit, I was a little surprised, a little taken aback. Not just because of how amazing she seemed, and not just because of how well they seemed to fit together, but also because of the nature of their relationship. You see, Due to Rob's rather 
flamboyant approach to life. I had always expected him to settle down with a lovely little Peruvian man. <laughs> Potentially named Paco or something like that. <laughs> now, as the relationship grew and blossomed, Rob and Mara got increasingly comfortable in front of each other. They got increasingly comfortable in front of their parents, and their parents got increasingly comfortable in front of them. Mara remembers in particular the first time that my mum lost her temper in front of Rob, in front of her. It was later on in their university years, Rob was doing his diploma or some other nonsense or whatever. Now, being the flamboyant man that I told you he was, he wanted to go heli skiing in Canada with some Instagram models or something like that. Now this, you might assume, is all well and good but he wanted to use the majority of his inheritance money to do so. <laughs> now, being the stubborn man that he is, he had ignored my mother's cajoling that this is the right thing to do. And it wasn't until a car ride, when it all came to a head with Graham, my mum, Rob and Mara in the car, and my mum absolutely lost it at Rob, in a way that genuinely frightened Mara. <laughs> But Rob, being the stubborn guy that he is, went anyway and apparently had a great time. <laughs> my, f I've, my first interaction with Robbie um, outside the classroom were on various shabby patches of grass around the school where we went together. We would throw our blazers on the ground as goalposts and play a sport we affectionately called football. To the average spectator, however, who would have laughed at the occasional one of us standing around just eating a baguette, or the anybody in the box can catch the ball rule, it was clear that only a handful of us knew what they were actually doing. It was here I quickly realized Robbie was one of these talented, naturally talented people. And I developed a strategy of pass the ball to Robbie wherever he was on the pitch and let him do the rest. It was a guaranteed road to success. Of course, there were t games where Robbie was on the opposite team, and being primarily a defender, I quickly adopted a swipe at the ankles as he <laughs> danced past me approach. It wasn't until university that I would have a chance to get to know Robbie a little better. We ended up in the same university halls where, as students do, we would routinely socialize together over one or two drinks too many. Here, as we all know, is where Robbie and Mara would meet, although details of exactly when and where are a little hazy. However, we do know that despite Mara not only rejecting, but also fleeing the country from his first attempt to ask her out at the end of first year, Wise. The, the pair continuously emailed throughout summer, Robbie purposefully waiting a few days before replying just to play it cool. And upon arriving back at university for second year, Robbie plucked up his Dutch courage and asked Mara to go out with him for a second time. Alas, being propositioned in an Edinburgh club on a drunken night out wasn't quite what Mara had in mind. <laughs> and once again, Robbie was unsuccessful. His third attempt was finally the right combination of timing and location, and eventually Mara gave in. She hasn't made it easy on him, though, as we've heard with all of her travels. But still, this wonderful couple came out the other side stronger than ever. Whenever somebody tells me that long-distance relationships don't work, I don't hesitate to tell them Robbie and Mara's story as evidence to the contrary. It is an incredible achievement and only proves their love and devotion to each other. During this time, Robbie and I found we had more in common than simply attempting to play football. It took a little longer than it should have done for Mara to be able to identify which one of us had answered his phone. And I'm not sure I ever did get back the pair of jeans Robbie borrowed from me after Mara complimented him in them. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> I never did. It's true. I've got them now. Yeah. <laughs> Mara's occasional travels also gave Robbie and I time to develop our love of whiskey and occasional gaming nights where even in virtual football he would run circles around me. Now, Robbie and mine flats together haven't always been what you would call classy, to say the least. <laughs> and sometimes I was amazed Mara would even brave the state of them to visit Robbie. However, when she did, the two had an unrivaled ability to use all kitchen utensils, pots and pans to produce a complicated, admittedly tasty looking meal before performing a vanishing act and leaving the rest of us with a pile of washing up to do. Yes. <laughs> the thing is, they only have four meals that they create and then it's ten, sorry, ten. 
I'm happy to report that elements of this tradition are still alive, with guests at their flat warmly received and provided delicious courses of food, but they can rest in peace knowing that there is a dishwasher to take the strain. <laughs> Post-university, Robbie's good fortune landed him alone in a four-bedroom house in the centre of London, where I rapidly installed myself whenever possible. <laughs> When your house comes provided with a beer pong table and bound laminated instruction manual, it would be rude not to take full advantage. Oh, lost my place, sorry. One weekend after relaxing brunch, we invited a few people over for a spontaneous soiree. It was here Robbie decided to show off his previous practice by finishing a game of beer pong, bouncing the ping pong ball off a kitchen cabinet into the final cup, while some Lord of the Rings style epic music played in the background. To this day, I still think he's very proud of that moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, Robbie's natural talent for all things sports has lured him into a false sense of cockiness, as was evident to him a few years ago on a trip to New York. Mara, Gabby and Robbie decided to go rollerblading, and with confidence, Robbie handed over his trainers to the rental place as he collected his rollerblades. It turns out, as we've heard before, inline is not Robbie's strongest point, and it wasn't long before Robbie was doing his best Bambi on ice impression, <laughs> barely able to stand and falling straight onto his bum. Fortunately, I think it was only his ego that was a little bruised as he padded around Central Park in his socks after Mara and Gabs. And that brings us, finally, to the bride. Mara, everyone has already said it, so we'll spare you even more blushes and say only something similar to what my mum said to you last night. Your beauty is matched only by your intelligence and the way you carry yourself and the strength of will that means that we all know who wears the trousers in your relationship. It gives us great pleasure to stand here in front of you all on this special day. Robbie, Mara, you are two of my closest friends and I really mean that. You are wonderful people, and I look forward to seeing how you progress in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise a glass and join me in a toast to the wonderful bride and groom. The bride and groom. Cheers.
Everything 